Hey everyone, my name is Walter, and we're back here once again to read some stuff from Reddit. Today we're talking about Nice Guys. Now, people will tell you all sorts of traits about Nice Guys, including the almighty Fedora, but really the only thing someone needs to do to be called a Nice Guy is call himself that. It's not a thing that someone has to say instead of show if they're actually nice. Nor is it a good enough trait to automatically make women take notice if it's their entire character concept. Anyway, that's enough of an intro. Let's begin now with Nice Guys from Reddit. This story comes to us from Reddit Nice Guy Stories. I usually say what the subreddit's for, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Classmate threatened to kill himself if my friend didn't agree to date him. Hi everyone, first time poster here. English isn't my first language, so I apologize in advance for any possible mistake. Disclaimer, this story is a hot mess and there is mention of suicide and self-harm. To be honest, I'm not even sure the guy qualifies as a nice guy, but you'll see. Also, this whole story happened to a friend of mine when we were both juniors in high school, but she doesn't have Reddit, so she agreed to let me post it here. So at the beginning of the year, our entire class was going on a ski trip, and my friend and I were roommates at the hotel we stayed in. Now I'm going to talk about the context of this story for a while before focusing on the nice guy part, because it's important. At the time, my friend, who we'll call CB, was dating a guy 20 years older than her. Well, she was 16, mind you, but that's a whole other story worth getting into another time. And this guy was super possessive to the point where she had to constantly justify where she was and who she was with by sending him snapchats of the room or wherever she was. Okay, so notice this controlling 36-year-old dating a 16-year-old girl is the worst character in this story and is barely even mentioned. I'd normally say send him to prison, but it sounds like this isn't in America, so it might very well be legal. Just thought I should say something there instead of at the end. One evening, we were hanging out in our hotel room with our group of friends, which included this story's nice guy, who we'll call V. He had just been included in our friend group, and I think everyone had a somewhat odd feeling about him because he was super secretive and never talked about himself. Which isn't that much of a problem in itself, but made him seem a bit weird at times, and difficult to get along with because you never knew what he was thinking. We still hung out with him because it didn't seem like he had any other friends, and leaving him all alone would have been a dick move. At some point, another guy from the group took CB's phone, took a selfie on it, and posted it on her Snapchat story, not knowing about her boyfriend being a control freak. Big mistake. Her boyfriend called her a minute later and went ballistic on her, calling her a cheater, and he broke up with her. She cried for a good half hour while we all went to bed feeling kind of awkward. The next day, she wouldn't eat and didn't get out of bed, so we had to go skiing without her. But after dinner, V took it upon himself to make her feel better by essentially just staying in her bed and cuddling with her for the rest of the week, which she agreed to. The guys and girls were on different floors, but he even managed to sneak out of his room at night to come sleep in her bed without anyone knowing. Except me, obviously. Anyway, the trip ended and we went back to school, not knowing if they were going to be a couple or something, and while they were still acting very coupley, generally being all over each other and cuddling in the corridors, CB always assured me that they weren't a couple and that she had made that clear with V over texts. One night I received a message from CB which simply read, We have a problem. So I asked her what that was about and she sent me dozens of screenshots of her conversations with V where she basically told him she didn't want to be in a relationship with him and he always responded by saying he was going to cut himself, overdose on pills or stuff like that. Now this went on for ages, literal months. He acted totally normal at school, never bringing any of that up, but every night I would have a new screenshot of him basically guilt tripping CB into agreeing to date him since she was the only one for him and that he wasn't going to make it without her. She had sent him texts where she apologized for leading him on while we were on our trip, saying she was just vulnerable and in a bad place mentally and never wanted to hurt him in the first place, but he wouldn't stop. I tried reaching out to him in case he actually wanted to kill himself because I was worried about him, but he just shut me down saying it was none of my business. This ended rather weirdly. Multiple people tried to get involved like I did, but he never told them anything. He just said he wasn't worth anyone trying to help him and that we would be better off without him. He would only talk to CB about killing himself and that it would be her fault if he did, and back in the day she herself struggled with mental health and suicidal thoughts so that was hard on her. He never actually went through with any of his threats though, and didn't talk to CB about this anymore, so we all just stopped talking about it altogether at some point in our senior year. He got a girlfriend who he treated rather badly, and always said he didn't love, and that the only girl he loved was CB, but his girlfriend never left him, so that was a nice relationship. And sarcasm. I don't excuse all the emotional manipulation he did with CB and how he treated his girlfriend, but he did have mental health issues due to childhood trauma that he sorted out after we graduated two years ago, so now he's actually a decent friend. I'm always invited to his birthday and we went on vacation together with a couple of people from our initial friend group. CB and him are still friends and they hang out together at parties and such. 
I think we just collectively decided to pretend this never happened, or rather move past it and never talk about it again. So here you have it, now that I've typed it out into words, I'm even less sure this qualifies as a nice guy story, but I'll post it either way. Feel free to react however you will, and ask for clarification if some parts are unclear to you. Okay, on the subject of if he was a nice guy, not from anything the author told us. Those behaviors often coincide with being a nice guy, but I don't think they're necessarily related. That said, the suicide threats get me every time. I'd encourage everyone here to not let someone manipulate them doing that, and I don't think most people do. It is a very sore subject for some people who've had to deal with it though, including the girl from this story. And she wasn't quite as innocent as they usually are, she wasn't entirely uninterested anyway, but it didn't make any of his actions afterward okay. I do think that we should forgive things that happened in high school, unless they were really bad, because we all do cringy things when we're teenagers. Or was that just me? Huh. Hope he at least got over her enough to stop treating his girlfriend like shit though. But you know what's coming next? That's right, some posts from Reddit Nice Guys. I don't cover posts enough sometimes. What did you not know about women until much later in your life? That they don't actually want to be around guys that treat them well. I kept getting taught the lesson over and over again and kept thinking I was doing something wrong. Turns out I was treating them well and they just didn't like that. Started being an asshole and suddenly was drowning in pussy. I don't know man, this is giving off serious Reddit nice guy vibes. I've never found that treating my dates like shit got me more pussy. That's a hate subreddit that should be banned. And how are you doing with the ladies? If you're having success, perhaps it's because you're already an unintentional asshole so there's no need to change. Wait, who would think that this is a hate subreddit? The National Coalition of Nice Guys? Also, Unintentional Asshole would probably be a good band name. Why do women lie compulsively? I've gone to a few incel exit subreddits and asked females about their advice on how to get out of inceldom. They all say the same thing. You just gotta love women and treat them wonderful. Women want to be loved and feel special. You just gotta be confident, bro. You just gotta dress good, cut your hair, shower, and smell good. It doesn't matter that you have a deformed face. Just dress good. You just gotta join a club or something. It's your personality. These are all lies. Every single one of them. Females are pathological liars, and they seem to want to keep us in inceldom because they are not telling us the truth. They know who they are fucking. It's the asshole Chad, but yet they don't tell you to become the asshole Chad. They want to keep you as a subservient beta. They fully know who they want, but they won't tell you what it is because ma virtue signaling and feelings and bad men need to stay beta. If females were telling the truth, they'd say things like, you need a handsome face, get surgery, height and dick size matters, although you can't fix those, personality, pfft. We want a big, tall, aesthetic Chad who will sweep us off and carry us to his sex dungeon. It's all about the face. No looks, no life. You need to treat us like shit. We aren't sexually attracted to nice boys. We want men who are assholes, etc. You get the idea. That was a bit of an incel crossover, I guess. A very stereotypical one, too. If he already knows all the answers, I wonder why he cares that women aren't saying them. At this point, if I was willing to send that message about you not being good at conversation, you have to assume I'm kind of indifferent to our conversation souring. But for further notice, whenever you match with someone else, actually put in the effort to talk or don't have the app at all. On here you're either going to find individuals like me who want to get to know you or dudes who just want to hook up. I don't need to tell you this, you know it already. But if you don't want to be objectified and treated like a hoe, which I'm sure you're not, you have to be a bit more enthusiastic. If not, just delete the app, because uncomfortable situations like this one will keep happening. God, seems like she wasn't responding and he sent one of those not so good at conversation, are we, messages, basically making fun of her. I bet those have gotten so many men laid throughout the years. This one is titled, Guy who saw me at my job found me on Instagram somehow. Red flag. He began sending me solely voice messages, big red flag, and I responded with how weird it was. He asked if I wanted to meet up and I said I'll think about it. I then stopped responding. Are you avoiding me? It's been three days and nothing. I hope no other guy treats you the same way or does the same thing as you did to me. Thanks for being a coward instead of actually explaining or talking. Nothing but ugly on the inside. I don't know if you have a conscience or know what's right and what's wrong, but I'll still wish you the best because I'm a good soul. We'll also hope Incense see you again because if so, would give you a piece of my mind of how to treat people with decency and respect. Good luck. He's going on about right and wrong, does that mean it's wrong to not respond to him for three days? He's pretty pissed about it. 
You happy now? I heard you got a boyfriend. Look, you're probably busy in class. I get that. Though I can't believe you didn't choose me. Fucking, I have you everything. Don't forget that. How is he, by the way? He can't possibly be treating you any better than I could. Once he realizes you're a slut, he'll leave you real quick. Learn to deal with yourself first before you drag him into the mess. Does he even know about your suicidal tendencies? Oh right, you don't have those anymore because you're happy, right? God damn, is this one not going to be monetized? You're such a fake. You know, I really wish the he fucking went through with the plan before he got all soft. Your reputation will get ruined so quick. A slut, a whore, a lair, and a cheater. You're not loyal and flirt with anyone. You're pathetic. You better respond. I know you're reading this. God, you should have fucking killed yourself when you tried. Nobody would have missed you. Whatever, I'll see you around, bitch. Can't wait to hear about your breakup with Jack in about a month or so. He doesn't even love you. No one does. Why would he love you? Wow, I can tell he would have treated her well. He's certainly doing it over text. The OP clarifies a few things in the comments. Basically, I have no idea who this guy is. It's a throwaway account, and they're upset because I got a boyfriend who is so lovely, hence the name Jack being mentioned in the messages. Also, it cut off, but in the message afterwards, he called me an ugly-ass bitch who was annoying as hell and who nobody would love. Yep, he could totally treat me better, as well as bring up the fact that nobody wants me. That's why my birth mom got rid of me. He was basically throwing shade at my adoption shit. We love a nice guy. He's so lovely. I really liked the you better respond in all caps. Good men do exist. We're just not rich and we're ugly, so you women don't notice us. A lot of guys don't know this, but it helps if you start by calling yourself ugly. Women love that, I swear. It's like comments in the algorithm. Hi, so you know that type of guy you always friend zone, Who you say is just too perfect and you only see him as a friend? But then you bitch and moan and cry about why you can't find or have that type of guy? Yeah, that's me. So I guess you probably won't even talk to me. Typical? That profile is a self-fulfilling prophecy. People are actually arguing in the comments about whether or not it's over if you're 5'11". Dear ladies, when you dress half-naked, you attract men with naked mindsets, with troubled pants. This is not judgmental, but the fact that most men don't eat uncovered foods, food poisoning is deadly. Cover up modestly, sexy and hot is not a fruit of the spirit. I have no idea. I hate it when I see a girl get with a guy I know is trash. When I try to tell her to reconsider about wasting time with him, it's no use because she will just blow me off, even though several people will tell her the same thing. It may not be any of my business, but damn, isn't your current relationship going to be a basis of how you judge other men in the future? You will get hurt and fail to see the good men in front of you because we're all a piece of shit, all men are the same, and she will more than likely repeat the same pattern over and over again until she values herself enough to wait for the right guy to come along instead of her usual pieces of shit. Good guys get bypassed and the asshole will take precedence in her life before she can regret it. Hashtag oh well. He makes it sound like he regularly tells women not to date guys because they're pieces of shit. I feel like that's kind of transparent. Girls talk about wanting a nice guy, but in reality they don't. One comes along and they use them for their own reassurance and self-confidence. As soon as that's done, they ignore him for some arsehole, and when they're upset afterwards, they go back to the nice guy and repeat. What's the point of being the nice guy? Every single time you get pushed around and eventually replaced. Even when you do as much as possible to help them. You're kind, caring, and actually look at more than just looks, but it's always the same outcome. I'm fucking sick of it. If you feel like a girl is using you, you don't have to keep crawling back to her either. Tell yourself it's out of niceness, but I never believe you. Fellas, don't feel bad for all these girls on Facebook talking about how lonely and sad they are, they ain't got nobody, etc. First off, they got a whole ass inbox full of messages from some nice guys that they haven't responded to, let alone even took the time to read. Second, you already know these kind of girls are talking to at least five other dudes. She just can't pick which one she likes the most because she is, in fact, the fuckboy. Keep your head up and don't worry about these ladies, my kings. Women all have a folder full of nice guy messages and they've been holding out on me? Rude. Found on Eminem's My Name Is. Yikes. Women usually say that to break a dude's a heart who would actually be a good boyfriend and will usually date a complete asshole instead. The let's be friends guy is usually kept around as a rebound if things don't go well for the girl. It's an emotional roller coaster for the dude. Wait, is he talking about the line extraterrestrial running over pedestrians in a spaceship while they're screaming at me, let's just be friends? 
I guess the context doesn't matter. This guy just heard those words and had to stop and leave a comment. Beautiful. One more post. Girls today always post shit about how they want to be treated by a guy, but when a nice guy like me wants to give her all these things, it's just no. Like, bitch, don't be complaining if a guy offered you thus and you said no, that's your fucking fault. Why? Let's check the comments. And to add a cherry to this shit Sunday, this fella's taken multiple videos of him jerking off and sent them to my friend, who had a boyfriend at the time completely out of the blue. Yeah, it's very nice behavior. He fits right in here. Anyway, this is getting a little long, so that's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like the video if you liked it, leave a comment about how you feel about nice guys, in general, or related to one of the posts. And if you're new here and want more of the same, consider subscribing. It should show you most of the time when I upload, I think. Okay, considering this one is not going to be monetized, I think it's time to shout out my generous patrons who helped me deal with that. LaVon, Chris Sturman, Invader Jill, Hugo Hedden, Cho, Shea Parker, Mary Vinorsky, Louis Sorosko, Spoonie the Rogue, Hunter Malcolm, Amanda Gillies, Chocobo Asylum, Camper Supreme, Knit One Code 2, Roy, Rissa Damore, Lil Spoon, Ms. Mayhem, Jubes, Donuts, Regrettable Stitches, Jack Pacey, Clint Painter, and Esperova. Thanks so much. I can't believe people will help me keep making content. What a world. Anyway, not sure what I'm going to be up to next. I'm hoping another video is coming soon and we're probably going back to relationships or am I the asshole? Also, Lucas Werner is probably homeless again, so maybe I'll talk about him soon. There's definitely content coming up though. Right, have a great day everyone, and look out for those guys with troubled pants.